I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question based on squeeze theorem. The question here is to evaluate limit x approaches 0 from the right side for x square e to the power of sine pi by x. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now, as I was saying, we'll apply squeeze theorem to find this limit. So we need to find limit of x squared times e to the power of sine pi by x. So let's begin from sine theta, for example. Let's, let's understand this. So let's say sine theta in general. The value of sine theta is always between minus 1 and plus 1, right? That is what its range is. So the value of sine theta cannot be beyond this. Perfect. Now if theta is equals to pi by x as given in this question, then for that particular value also, sine pi by x will also be between minus 1 and plus 1. No problems, right? Now, if I take e to the power of all these things, then I could write this as e to the power of minus 1 is less than equals to e to the power of sine pi by x is less than equals to e to the power of 1. Now, how can I do that? Well, exponential functions are increasing, right? Since exponential functions are always positive, right? So, they are positive, so they and e to the power of anything, right? They are positive, so they and what you see here is exponential function is kind of like this. Is it okay? So in general, when we take exponents, we can then this statement should also be true, right? So lower value is lower for e to the power of lower value, for e to the power of higher value that will be higher. So it is going to be between those two limits. Does it make sense to you, right? Now, we can multiply by x square also. We can say x square times e to the power of minus 1. x square times e to the power of what we have here, sine pi by x. And we have x square times e to the power of 1. So x square times e to the power of sine pi by x should be between x square times e to the power of minus 1 and x squared times e to the power of 1. You see that? It's between these two values. Now, if you look into the graph of e to the power of minus 1, or the value of e to the power of minus 1 and e to the power of 1, the value is here 1 over e. There it is e, right? But what happens to x when x is approaching 0? Okay, remember one thing. We could multiply this by x squared because x squared is always positive, right? So if you multiply by a positive number, inequality will not change. Perfect. Now the question here is, we need to find the limit of this function, the function in the center. So we can find limit of the inequality as such. So we could rewrite this as limit x approaches 0 plus. We are going from the plus side for x squared times e to the power of minus 1. That should be, this should be less than limit x approaching 0 plus for x squared e to the power of sine pi by x and that should be less than limit x approaches 0 from positive x squared, right? So that to the power times e to the power of 1. <coughs> now, e to the power of 1 and e to the power of minus 1 are numbers. Great. And x squared, when x approaches 0 from the positive side, is 0. Now, since we know that limit, when x approaches 0 from positive side for x squared times e to the power of minus 1 is equal to 0, and we also know that this limit, when x approaches 0 
from positive side for x square e to the power of 1 is also 0. So these two limits on the boundaries are 0. So what we are saying here is that the limit for x approaching 0 from the positive side for x square sine pi by x is between between these two limits which is 0 and 0. Now from the squeeze theorem we can say so let's apply the squeeze theorem. Squeeze theorem states that if the value of the function is squeezed between two values on left and right side and if both are equal then the value of the function is same as those values right so so from squeeze theorem we conclude that the limit of this function as x approaches 0 plus the function is x squared e to the power of I'm sorry e to the power of sine pi by x is equal to 0 right so this limit is actually equal to 0 the proof is right there and what we did was we applied squeeze theorem so let me write down here you can look into some of my videos where I have explained the squeeze theorem in details so that there is no confusion on this part I'm Anil Kumar and I hope you appreciate it. You can always post questions and queries for me to answer. Feel free to share and subscribe to my videos. Thank you and all the best.